Well, hello, Team Linux. Um, I feel like I haven't been talk to, talking to you for a really, really long time. Um, so, as I said before, um, I'm going to post two videos about these coming two chapters. So, I was really, really trying my best to find time to get this job done, but I got so busy. So, um, here I am uh, starting uh, the two chapters that we were supposed to talk about today. So, as I said, I'm just posting this video and uh, I'll see you guys on next Wednesday class. So, and just to clear things up, today, uh, Feb February uh, 21st, 2024, we don't have a Zoom meeting. Okay, so first thing first, we're going to talk about the first chapter that we're going to cover in this video, and then in, for the next chapter, I'm going to create a new video for it, of course. Uh, this chapter is all about environment variables. So, um, before I jump into uh, environment variable, we need to understand what is a variable. Well, variable, the same concept of that we use in programming in general, is used in Linux. So, in Bash specifically, you can create variable. For example, here, this is Python that I have here. I can create a variable. I'll call it num1, and I'll send 10, assign 10 to it, and then I can print this variable num1, and it's simply going to show me the value. So, variables is just simply uh, a reserved space inside the memory that you're going to identify by a specific name and then you're going to assign a value to that variable and then every time you reference the variable name anywhere in a program simply you're going to be calling the value that is stored uh, in that memory location in that location in the memory so the same concept that we have in programming in general is simply applied here. And by the way, just in case you didn't notice, I'm using super uh, pretty here. So um, I can create variables in, in Linux Bash, just like how I do in, uh, in any programming language. But we have, of course, some certain rules that we have to pay attention to. So I can come here and say num1, just like I did before, equal 10. So this is me creating a variable with, with a value num with the identifier num1 and the value 10 is stored so if I just want to have access to that just for the sake of printing it I can just come here and say print sorry num1 and you can see here here's printing the value 10. Now this is not the whole purpose of course of variables in, in this course I'm just showing you that what is a variable and what is it used for but what you should know that in Linux we have what we call environment variables. Now environment var variables are sort of variables that are going to be created by the shell and the environment variables are simply going to be storing some values that are very very important for the operating system for the bash and for you as a as uh, as a user for that operating system and we're going to see a lot of these variables and for now I'm just going to show you the most important one in my opinion which is uh, the path variable if you type path it will show you those this text that you see here now this text is very very important because this text simply tell Linux where to look uh, every time you write a command every time you write a command by the way any command that you write is simply a you can think about it as a program and that program needs to be executed so by typing the command the first thing the Linux operating system will do is just to search in the path using all these uh, absolute uh, paths that you see here searching for a program that will match the name of the command that you typed looking for it okay so at a certain point you will uh, need to learn how do you modify it and how do you update it and how do you change it but this is one of the variables but there's one variable that we already learned about before it's called shell and it's going to tell you the location of the default shell that you're using in this uh, Operating system. So those are what we call environment variables. Okay. Now, as we go through the semester, and the more you learn about the operating systems, the more you know about these variables and how you have access to them and how do you modify them. What is the meaning of these variables and what is the meaning of their values? The more you be familiar with the operating system and the more you have control over the operating system. So <clears throat> it's a process of learning more and more about. Uh, Linux and one of the most important parts is to learn about these environment variables which we're going to see in a, in, in a sec <coughs> how do we have access to them <coughs> how, do, how, how do we have a look at them so one thing you also should know that variables usually are categorized into global variables and local variables 
Okay, <clears throat> global variables again uh, are created by the shell uh, sessions. Uh, and let me just make sure that I get this right. Okay, okay, I just got it. Um, we learned in the previous chapter that you can create multiple shells, multiple bashes, and we will have a sort of relationship in trees. Okay, so every time you, you create a variable that is outside of a shell, and when you create a new shell, the variable that you created before you 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 you, you got into a new shell, uh, it's simply considered as a global. And every time you create a global uh, a variable within inside the shell is considered as a local. It's the same concept in programming depending on where did you create the variable and the accessibility for the variable. It's not really a big deal but you should know since you can have multiple shells running in your computer system in your in your computer system and you know that there's that tree relationship between them. So when a variable is created you need to understand if that variable is a global or is a local for the current bash that you are uh, utilizing and you are using. So, for example, this uh, variable that I created before num1, if I come here and create a new bash, if I type bash, for example, now this is a new bash because if I say ps, it will see that I got two bashes and I believe this is the parent and this is the dash. Now since I created num1 in the parent, so that's considered as a global variable uh, for this bash. Now if I come here and create, let's say, a new variable num2 equal 100, then this here again, num2, is considered a local for this bash, the, the, the child bash. Okay, so this is again just to know what's the difference between global variables and local variables. And again, you may not understand the point of this global and local at this point but I can promise you that when we get to the part where we're going to type scripts you are simply going to be you're going to have to understand and you have to understand if, if every variable you're going to be using is it a global or is it a local okay and the environmental variable usually environment variable are again are global variables usually uh, every single different Linux operating system comes with different types of variables, of course. And if you actually want to see the variables, the, the environment variables that you have in your system, just type print env, and it will show you all of those variables, uh, environment variables that you have here. Now, you can see here, pdw. This is, again, my home directory. Um, let's see here. There's a server, there's a mail folder, and this is the default folder for that. Well, simply all my mails are supposed to be stored there in that server. This is the home directory. You can see here, this is my home directory, which is the same as the PW. Uh, what else? This is a login. That's a variable. Uh, let's see here. Where's the path? The path should be here. Here's the path, as I said before. It goes all the way to here. So you can see here, those are all the variables that are created and you can see there's a color variable as well again we're gonna go like step by step learning about all these uh, uh, variable environment variable here's the language and the encoding system that is used uh, what else let's see here um, this is all I can think about here oh here this is the SSH connection so this is the uh, IP address of the server that we're connected to so you can see here a lot of these information are simply all of these variables are holding information that are important for the operating system itself. Um, so again, by a quick look at what I'm saying, I can say that the language here, this is a, an important variable, the mail, the PDW, but the most important one, as I said before, is the path. I should see this shell somewhere. Oh, unless, oh here, still, I have a lot here I didn't pay attention to. Host name. Here we go. That's another thing. Uh, shell. This is again. That's what I was looking for. Uh, let's say the history size. You can see here. So every one of those variables are accessible. And if you want to just print them on the screen, all you have to do, remember here, use the, sh the variable name, but you have to put the dollar sign in the front of it. Uh, let's give a try to 
And I want you to pay attention. Have you noticed that num1 and num2 are not listed here? Because again, they're not environment variable, of course. So if I come here and tap echo dollar sign host name, and you can see that's the host name. And have you also noticed how every single one of those variables are uppercases? That's again, that's you can have variables that are not uppercases, but again, to bring your attention, uh, they are capitalized. All the little characters are uppercases. So you basically, every time you see something like that, you will know that uh, you're dealing with environment variable. Okay. Um, let's see here. What else? Okay. I'm just, uh, ha I'm ha I have the PowerPoint in the other side so I can uh, follow the track of uh, the subjects. How do you create your own local variables? As, as I showed you that before, the idea here that you have to pay attention, there should no be spaces. Like, let's see here. If I type num1 and I put a space and I put 10, that should not work. And you can see here, it's not working. So you should not have spaces whenever you want to create a variable. And whenever you want to have access to a variable, remember here, you have to put the dollar sign as you are reading it. Now, if I let me just show you what we can do with variables just to give you an idea. Before I go back to the environment variable, I can say, as I have num1 and num2. So if I echo dollar sign num1, oh, wait a minute, where is that? Oh, uh, let's see here. If I echo num2, I can have access to it, which is 100. Now, if I kill bash, if I want to go back, if I type exit, now if I go PS, you'll see that I have only one bash. Now if I echo dollar sign num1, and you can see that I have the 10. Okay? So let's go ahead and create another variable here, num3 equal 20. Oh, wait a minute. Why is he complaining? Oh, there's no dollar sign here. My bad. Now, if I echo, and let me try to do this, num1 plus num2. Oh, he didn't like it. I think I should, wait a minute, I forgot about this. No, he doesn't like it that way. I just forgot about how to do that. Well, when we get to get to the scripting side, Yep, he didn't recognize it. There, there is a way I can add them together to show the results. But I, let me see here. If I say num equal dollar sign num1 plus dollar sign. Oh, wait a minute. I call it num3. Probably that's the reason. Let me go back. Three. Well, he's just going to print them as if they were a string. But again, he took 10 and he took the plus as it is. Um to do to print them as a result I'm not sure if it was square brackets or nope I think it should be square brackets and yes square brackets that's what I thought anyway this is again just to show you how do you deal with variables how do you create variables how do you have access to the values of variables um, and it's really, really something very simple. Now, when it comes to the variables and the naming of the variables, you should know that there are certain rules that you have to follow when you create variables. Most of the rules that we have here are very similar to the rules that we have in programming in general. But in Linux in general, you are only allowed to use letters, digits, and underscore, and you cannot start with digits. And of course, variables are case sensitive, so num with a lowercase no, uh, characters is different than num with up, uppercase characters. It is a case sensitive. Um, you should not start with a digit, as I said. Uh, those rules are very, very similar to C and C++. Uh, in Java, you can use the dollar sign, but in, in Linux here, for example, you cannot use the dollar sign. And one of the, th the things that I found a lot of students make mistakes with is that they actually use a spaces sometimes. And in Linux, you're not allowed to use spaces when you create variables because spaces are considered as a special characters and you should not use special characters. Okay? Uh, one of the things that I like to ask 
in exams is give you some variables names and I ask you to tell me if those are valid or invalid so that's a very very important uh, thing to be able to do and as I showed you before that local variables are only accessible in the bash or the shell that they were created at so remember here uh, num2 was created in the second bash and by the way once I exit that bash num2 of course doesn't exist anymore so let's just let me just show you here if I type bash again now remember previously I created num2 so if I say echo num2 you can see that it doesn't exist now num2 here is local for bash the second bash that I created so if I go if I create num2 here again num2 and I'll set it to 20 for example now I can echo num2 if I do that you can see here now if I exit and go back to my parent bash and if I try to echo num2 simply it would not show me anything as an indicator that num2 doesn't exist here so you have to pay attention for this fact like every single variable it's created simply is local for the bash session that it was created at okay now how do you create a global variable okay in, in Linux global variables are created by simply using the keyword export to make the local variable to be converted to a global variable and let's give this a try now if I go ahead and type PS you will notice here we have only one bash now if I go ahead and say show me num1 it's 10 show me num3 it's 20 now if I create another bash and if I come here and say echo num2 of course it will not show anything because again we we exit it and if I type 1 it doesn't exist and if I type 3 it doesn't exist inside that bash so my job and my goal here is to simply convert let's say uh, num3 to be a global variable okay now if I go again here PS you will see here I got the bash and if I go echo num3 it does exist echo num2 num1 it does exist okay now again if I go check uh, the print environment print E and V look around and I want you to see if you can see num1 and num2 here num3 now of course because again they are all upper cases here it's really hard for us to see that variable now if I want to again to create a variable and for that variable to be a global variable uh, all I have to do is to use the keyword export so X port okay num3 so num3 now is a global variable now let's go ahead and see the print environment and see if I can find it here now it's really hard for me to see where it is oh here it is so you see now just because I converted it again to a global variable it simply was stored in the file where all the uh, uh, environment variable I stored and here it is now let's go ahead and create a new bash okay so if I go PS you see I can have two bash now I'm in the child bash now if I echo dollar sign num3 it will show me the value because it's a global it's simply it's going to be stored inside this environment file so it's going to be considered as an environment that's environments are global variables and now you can have access to it in any child bash that you may actually create so this is again a very very important concept uh, it's I personally don't recommend to create variables and just go crazy like that um, and because it's going to be part of the system here but again you have that choice you can do it if you want to and one thing you should know once you restart the session uh, if you go back you probably will not be able to see that variable stored there it's simply going to be wiped up so once you convert that variable into a global variable it's going to be stored here with the other uh, environment variable but the moment again you log out and you try to log in again or you start your server that global variable that you created simply will be erased from 
uh, the print inv or the, 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 the global variables that you have in your system. And also, you should know that there is a way you can save it if you want to, but the book that we're using decided not to talk about it because I'll tell you, it's not an easy job. Okay, so um, I'm just going with the PowerPoint to see if I'm missing anything. Those two chapters, to be honest, are really, really easy. They're not that complicated. It's just about the variables. And there's a lot of exercises that I highly recommend that you guys go ahead and try them yourself. Removing environment. Okay, now if you want to remove environment, uh, remove a variable, you can do that by typing unset. Okay. Now, let's see how is that going to work if we want to remove uh, if we want to remove a, a, a variable. So let's just go back here and let's do this. Now, if I go PS, you'll see that I still have the two bashes, so I'm inside the child bash. And if I echo uh, num3, it will show me that value. If I type unset num3, so that should remove it. Now let's see if I go and try to echo it, you can see it doesn't exist. Now let me exist and go to my parent. So if I go PS now, I have only one bash. And let's try to echo num3. And look what's going to happen. It's still there. So you can see here when you unset a variable, it's simply just going to be unset from the current bash that you're using for. So if you're unset it from a child, it's simply going to be unset. You don't have access to it from a child. But the question is, it will not change it, and it's not going to take it out from the parent uh, there. Okay, so it's still there. So what if I unset it here? Unset num3. Okay, let's try to echo num3. Doesn't exist. Okay, interesting. Let's go ahead and try to check. And let's look. Can you see num3? It, it was here, I believe. You can see here it's gone okay so after you unset it so again once you create a variable as a global variable and if you create ba ch children bashes child okay you will have access to this global environment variable that you just created but the thing is if you unset it from your child uh, bash it will just be removed from the for the child bash but if you go to your parent bash and you remove it from there then it's going to be removed from the print environment so this is again a very very simple and easy uh, concept to understand about environment variables and variables in general and as i said before one of the most important uh, variables that we have is the path variable and i'm going to go and examine the path variable in a sec um, if let me clear and if I said uh, echo dollar sign path with upper cases, you will see all these. Now, have you noticed that how you have this path and then you have a colon and then this path and then a colon and then this path and a colon? And have you noticed most of these paths ends with a folder called bin or sbin? Again, this simply, this is what you should know that, again, all the pr executable programs and executable commands are simply stored in files, and, sorry, in folders, and different folders, actually, to be specific. Now, again, every time you're trying to run a command or execute a program, the operating system needs to know the location of that program. And usually, the if, if, and this is very, very important to understand, if the location of the program is not defined within the path variable, you will not be able to run the program. And if you want to actually run a program that is not defined inside the path variable, you have to navigate to the folder that contains, contains the program, and then you run it from there directly. So, for example, if I have a program that it could be executed inside this folder here, Home faculty El Janabi El Janab. Okay? So if that if this folder, for example, doesn't exist in the path and I try to run it from anywhere in the per in, in my operating system, it will not be executed because it doesn't know where it is. So simply again, you have to navigate to the location of the file, the executable file, and run it 
from there. Now, with that being said, in a lot of cases, whenever you install a software in your system, sometime in, during the installation process, the path variable is going to be updated. Okay, or the file will be installed, the executable file will be installed in one of those directories. But if, if the new file, the executable file that you're going to install is not within those paths that you see here, then there are two possibilities. One possibility that the program, as it's installed in your system, will go and update the path file and adding the location with the path for the new executable file, or it's going to leave it to you to do it manually. Now, Doing it manually is not a complicated process. It's really, really uh, easy. Okay. And uh, to do so, um, there's an exercise in the PowerPoint that I want you to give it a try by yourself. He wants you to go to a folder called, well, you know what? Let's just do it right now. What I'm going to do, I am going to go and copy... There is a user bin date. Okay, so date is, a, is an ex ex executable file that's located inside the bin folder inside user. Now, let me just uh, show you something. If I type date, you will see that it's showing me the date and the time right now. So, what he wants you to do, he wants you to copy that. Okay, so CP. Uh, backslash USR backslash bin backslash date. Now, where does he want you to uh, to your home directory? So, my home directory is home. Uh, you know what? I can just do it like this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it a new folder. Okay. Now, let's say, let me show you what happened. This date, if I go here and type ls, you'll see that new folder has been created. If I change my directory to the new folder, and if I type ls, you'll see date here. Now, if I type date, it will work. Okay? Now, what I want to do at this point is that I want to change the name, which I forgot that I was supposed to do before I copy it. Uh, let's say if I say copy date or move MV date to my date. Now, if I type LS, you would notice here it's my date. I just made a copy of it within the same folder, and of course, it's going to take the old one out away. So, I do have here my date my date simply if i type my date it will oh wait a minute cannot find oh wait a minute uh, it's a copy of the date so i'm supposed oh yeah of course it will not be able to find it even though i'm in the same folder clear and again let me just go ahead and type it here it is a new folder my files and my date now, if I, run, if I try to run it, my date, you'll see here, say, I have no idea what is my date. Well, let's see here. Let's, let me clear. Let me, sorry, go out. And, oh, this is my date. Uh, let me try uh, CD. Let me change, get out again. This is, again, I practiced this before. So here we go. This is, uh, this is faculty. So if I type my date now remember here my date has been already updated well look at that so that one is also not updated okay that's good and my date it's also cannot be found now let me just go ahead and, and, and change directory to uh, my folder I do have here my date and if I go to a new change faculty a new change directory sorry new folder and if I list it here I get my date again so the point here is that what I'm trying to show you here is that uh, when I was trying to run those two programs because they're not location the path is not defined inside the path variable so I simply need to go ahead and add that to the path uh, 
variable. I have to add m the location of these files to the path. Now, how do I do that? The idea is very simple. What you need to do, you need to type path, which is the name of the variable, equal my original path, so whatever the path is, and I'm going to add to it my home directory. So home, home, uh, faculty, I believe, that's the name of the folder, faculty, and uh, after that, A-A-L, Janab, and that will be one that I'm going to add, and I'm going to add another one, which is new folder, okay, so I added those two to the path. Now, if I echo path, you should see them at the end here. You see them, those two? Those two paths has been added to the path. Now, I know that my date with lowercase d is stored here, and my date with uppercase is stored here. So whether I'm typing my date, and let's give this a try, and it worked, and if I type my date with uppercase d, it worked too. So this, this part specifically is very, very important. Every time you run a program and you get this message of, uh, where is it? Let me just go back. Where, where is it? This is the path. Oh, it's not. It's not. I can't see it anymore. Anyway, you see that it's telling you that Bash cannot find the command that you're trying to execute. You simply, simply uh, add the path. You should know where is it it's stored inside your computer system in your uh, permanent storage device you need to know the path to that file and again this is some sort of details that you have to pay attention to and then after that you just go to the path and add it just like how I showed you here you t start with the variable name equal the original value remember this is very very important to keep the original value and whatever you have after that's simply going to be added to the original value and that is what I did at this point so this is again how do we update paths how do we uh, like uh, change and added some path to it um, we do have uh, some uh, tricks that we can pay attention to I'm just going through the PowerPoint uh, a common trick to add a single a single to a path uh, I'm not sure what is a single simply means Oh, yeah. If you add, uh, I just remembered. If you add, for example, I'm just going to type it here. If you type uh, path equal dollar sign path, and you put after that comma and dot, I think this will add the current directory that you are in to the path. And just to be sure, what I'm going to do... I'm going to create a new folder inside the new folder. I will say make directory. I'll call this folder. So if I go list and I change directory to this folder. Now in this folder, you can see here it's empty. Now if I go and update the path equal dollar sign path colon. Okay. Now let's go ahead and print. Uh, echo my bad dollar sign path and look what's going to be done oh this was added to it the dot only okay no there's there I'm missing something here my bad anyway um I'm pretty sure I looked for this, and I I I, I kind of think I know what the dot will do. Um, it's one of those two. It could add the home directory, or it's going to add the current directory. But now I just tried it. It just added this dash colon dash to it. Um, I need to go double check on that. Okay, the last part I believe of. Uh, this chapter is all about what we call arrays. Now, arrays 
if you have a background in, let me just change directory to my home directory. Arrays is, it's usually, it's a type of, it's not a variable to be honest, but if you want to think about it as a variable that can hold multiple values. And arrays, we consider arrays as a data structure. It's a placeholder that can hold multiple values. Unlike variables that can hold a single value, arrays can hold multiple va values. Okay, the same rules that uh, are applied to the name of the arrays is uh, to variables is, is applied to the array uh, uh, names. And uh, if you want to create an array uh, in the Bash environment, it's really easy. All you have to do is to have the name, for example, my array equal no spaces. Remember, you open a parenthesis and you close and you start listing the values you want to set there. Now values could be numerical values, it could be strings. Uh, one fact that you should know is that if you want to use, again, there, those values are going to be separated with, with the spaces. If you want to use one element that contains multiple words separated by a space, you have to surround it with double quotations. So if I come here and say, sorry, without double quotations, Monday, space, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then after that I want to put week and week and days. You can see here, because I want, oh, now we need week. Oh, come on, I pressed, oh, wait a minute, I can't. I have to go backward. Week and week days. Okay, if I want, if if, if I take those double quotations away, uh, this is going to be element. This is going to be element, element, element. But because I want them all to be in a single element, then simply put it this way. Now, if I echo my array, remember here you have to put the dollar sign. It's just simply going to show you the first element. Okay. Now the question is. What if I want to have access to other elements? Well, the idea here is very simple. Number one, let's go one by one. If I want to have access to any element, you have to put the uh, dollar sign, curly brace, close curly brace, and then you tell me the name of the array, and then square brackets and tell me which element you want to show. Now remember here, if I put zero, He's going to show me the first element. So we start counting from zero. So the zero here is what we call an index. And every single element here has an index. And we start counting from zero. So this is index zero, index one, two, three, four, five, and zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now remember here, this is how we have access to, you can see here, Tuesday, if I go here and put three, Thursday, and so on. And of course, just like I showed you before, if you just tell the show me array itself is just simply going to show you the first element if you don't indicate and you didn't specify um, which element you want to you want to show. Okay. Now, one of the things that you tr you should try to avoid is to put a number that passes the last index: zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There, it was zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I put seven here, it will show me that. But if I put eight, it will not show anything. Okay? Because again, th this is your limits, and you're trying to pass something that doesn't exist. You should know that in programming, in general, if you try to do this, you will get an error message. So what if I want to have access, and sorry, what if I want to show all the values? You put the and at, sorry, and it will show you all the data that you have in your uh, array. Now again, why is this important? At this point, it's not important. But when we're going to go, and, and believe me, when we get to the part where we're going to write scripts, that is where uh, those elements are going to be very, very useful. Now, if you want to display the number of the elements you have in an array, all you have to do is to put 
the pound sign here, and this should tell you how many elements you have here, and you have eight elements. Remember here, the last element have an index of seven, but the total number of elements are eight, and the reason why the last one is seven is because we start counting from zero. Um, we can change the values of, uh, of an array. For example, my, did I call it my array? Yep, with uppercase A. So if I, can, if I come here and say my array, and I'll go here, for example, point the first element, and I'm just going to type Monday. Okay, there's an N. Now, okay, why is he complaining? Monday is not found. Huh. I should be able to do this. Maybe there's no space. Yep, the space, that was the problem. Now, if I go back and try to echo everything, you'll see that Monday, which was MO only, now it's Monday. So you can update elements one by one if you want to. Um, what else do we have here? You can delete elements, by the way, from your array if you want to. Um, let's see here. If you want to add a new element to the array, it's also doable. Because as you can see here, we know that we have seven, eight elements, and the last element is seven. So, but if I come here and put eight, and here I would just say test, and now if I go back and say show me everything, you see that test has been added to the end of it. Now, if I want to delete something, all I have to do unset, just like how we did before. Now I can unset the whole array if I want to, but if I want to unset, delete one element, I will say my array. And let's go, for example, I want to delete the seventh element, which is week and weekdays, which again, doesn't make that much of sense. Now, if I show them, you will see that it was deleted from and removed from the array. If I want to know the indexes, which is again, very simple, um, instead of, uh, if you show the pound, it's going to tell you how many elements you have, but if you put this simple here, it will tell, show you the indexes. And look here, do you notice how, how he skipped seven? So if I want to have access to seven, even though it doesn't exist, but usually again, you, you will think that you will see seven here, but no, you'll see eight. So this is extremely important to understand when it comes to indexes. And it's different than programming in general. In programming, if you don't delete an element from an array, you're going to have to shift all the elements one step to a certain direction, and then the indexes are going to be kept in the same order, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to the end. But here, when you unset a variable, an element in an array, you will see that the element and its index are gone from that array. Now, if I want to unset the whole array, of course, I can do my array and it's gone now, and if I just go ahead and echo, let's see here, you'll see that there's nothing. So this will be the end of this video. I am going to pause this video, and shortly I'm going to start with the second one. So see you guys then.